The crisis in Eastern Europe continues to meet uh, civil harm on uh, millions, especially uh, citizens of uh, protagonist countries involved. Especially, we are looking at Russia and Ukraine, and extensively, it is uh, it has hampered the free exportation of uh, food across the globe, and precisely the des destination of Africa. We are looking at uh, a wheat flour that is widely needed, and uh, Ukraine is uh, top on the chart in the production of uh, that agricultural product that is uh, estimated at over 400 million tons and uh, that and more is uh, some of the uh, impact of that crisis that uh, Europe and especially Africa are facing today. We shall be looking into all that on this edition of Twilight and also uh, look at cooperatives as a means of uh, boosting food security, especially within our context. But how do we go about setting up cooperatives? We have an expert in the house that will be giving us highlight, especially when you have to go through that procedure under the Ohada law. Ladies and gentlemen, you're on, you're watching Twilight of uh, this uh, second day of the the week to send off uh, is for so let's take this break when we come back we shall be going over to the west region to take a pause on how the community of the Fusa people are planning the next edition of the Nyang Nyang cultural festival <laughs> Let's now go over to the West Region where sons and daughters of uh, Bafusam, West Region of the country, have been invited to engage themselves to the smooth unfolding of the 458th edition of the Nyang Nyang Festival that will begin next month. The uh, call for gathering was made by the paramount uh, ruler of the Fusep, uh, His uh, Royal Highness Jita Gompe Pele. On the line from Bafusam, let's walk up with um, Gu Henry Tiesambe. Good evening, Gu. Good evening, Dixon, and welcome to Bafusam. Thank you very, very much. Now, the next month, we'll see the 458th edition of the Nyang Nyang Festival that comes up every after two years. Now, enlighten us a little about this festival. To begin with, Dixon, Bafusam is one of the five chiefdoms in the Mifi division. It is a second-class chiefdom founded around the year 1200 by the people from the Tika Plains. Talking about the Nyang Nyang Cultural Festival, Nyang Nyang here means pa. The festival is an occasion par excellence for sons and daughters of Bafusam, known here as Futsap, to promote their rich cultural heritage. For the peculiarities, it is the longest cultural festival in the West region that runs for four good months. It is carried out not only at the Palace Plaza, but in the neighborhoods and streets of Bafusam, like other cultural or unlike other cultural festivals here in the West region, which are organized in palaces. The opening and the closing ceremonies, Dixon, you may want to know, are uh, pull huge crowds of sons and daughters of uh, the village. Uh, visitors from far and near and the curious onlookers. It is equally a rare occasion to see the chief of Bafusam dancing and uh, taking part in the parade. Dixon? Now he was uh, out uh, to call on the sons and daughters of uh, that locality to uh, come together and see into it that this other edition uh, is a successful one. Now what exactly did he see and what should we expect? Yeah, that was uh, on Sunday at the Palace Plaza where the ruler of Bafusam chief, Jin Tak Ngompe Pili, launched the new cultural season for the village. Uh, chief Jin Tak Ngompe Pili said this other edition is the 458th edition of uh, the Nyang Nyang Festival. As you did indicate, it is a moment for him to communion with sons and daughters of uh, the village, the cleansing of the village to purify all the sons and daughters of the village and equally inaugurate projects realized within the past two years in the Bafusam chiefdom. Above all, the initiation of the sons of Bafusam. Now, how important is this uh, festival especially to the Fusep? 
Yes, uh, Dixon, you may want to know that uh, you are a man in Bafusam on, only when you, have, uh, in, you are initiated to perform the Nyang Nyang Cultural Festival. But as they say, you don't go to equity with dirty hands. You only go for the ritual when you are pure. So it is an equal occasion for them to purify their village and uh, initiate development projects for the next two years in Bafusam. Above all, promote the chiefdom and bring prosperity in the Bafusam chiefdom. Thank you very much, Ngu Henry Chesambe, all the way from Bafusam, to give us highlights on the next edition of uh, the Nyang Nyang Festival to come. And that will begin next month, November. Thank you very much for answering our region on call this evening. You are welcome, Dixon. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we shall begin with things proper on this platform. Thanks for staying on to CLTV News. We, uh, you are watching uh, Twilight, your favorite, I want to say favorite uh, sunset talk show on CLTV News. In the start of the, on the start of the program, I told you we'll be looking at the impact of the crisis in Eastern Europe on the world and precisely Africa and Cameroon, especially when it comes to uh, wheat, uh, flour, distribution because uh, we have the impression that the world is not faring well with that crisis and uh, not just africa but europe too because uh, russia is considered a giant on that continent and to dissect all that for us this uh, evening we have uh, a great mind in the house simon pascal alain handy good evening yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are an international analyst. I just want us to go with international analysts because if we want to go down the portfolio, uh, we're going to use the entire <laughs> program to... The laundry list of achievement. Uh, All right. It's not really significant at this point. I think we're going to have an informative, intellectually stimulating and entertaining conversation about major challenges exactly. uh, facing our continent and how uh, on a global scale yeah. uh, the continent can have and raise is a relevant voice now it's been nine months already since that crisis took a, a different proportion and uh, the world has been feeling the impact from mm -hmm. europe africa especially east africa mm -hmm. now what reading do you have to eat at this point in time um i think that is one of the major crises of our time mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that it is challenging the rules based world order that we inherited from 1945 mm -hmm. And uh, in that sense, um, I, I firmly believe that it's among one of the five major um, key issues uh, facing global affairs. You have the energy crunch, you have the, the, the international food crisis. We're just coming out of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, climate change. And, and all of those issues are coalescing and presenting of, uh, with unique challenges okay. on um, how we're going to be able to repair but our, and salvage uh, that rules-based system. And if it's salvageable, how Africa can stand and speak with, uh, from a position of authority to uh, validate a position where we move from the menu to the table, and then we have a vision and a perspective on how we reformulate the international architecture that is emerging. You who have been very consistent with international affairs, do mm -hmm. you see this coming? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you, you could see it coming. It's been long in the making because uh, tectonic shift mm -hmm. uh, take places very slowly, mm -hmm. and that is why the uh, the uh, disruptive manifestation of crisis is so brutal mm -hmm. uh, in the eyes of those who have not been observing it. But it was clear from the end of the Cold War in 1991 that the um, the its war, never ending its war expansion of NATO was going to clash and, 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 and collide with the Russian uh, national security interests. Now, as you know, uh, we Africans uh, do not take sides because I fundamentally exactly. believe that not only we don't have a vested interest in this, we don't have a dog in this fight, exactly. as we usually say. 
in, 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 in neighborhoods. But I think uh, 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 that in 1991, there was already um, an open letter to President Clinton mm -hmm. written by some of the most prominent intellectual and senators uh, and dignitary in America. I mean, the, uh, the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. And that really warned the administration at that time that the promises made to the uh, Russian authorities were to be respected and then there was no redeeming value mm -hmm. or no trickle-down benefit for international affairs mm -hmm. in, in, in expanding and bringing uh, the transatlantic an uh, alliance mm -hmm. uh, to to the to the near border uh, of Russia. So that letter is significant because it informed us mm -hmm. of what was the political mood uh, uh, at the time. But there is also um, a significant fact: uh, the the conference, the Munich conference that took place in 2007 in Bucharest, I mean in 2008 in Bucharest, was preceded uh, what was fo was followed up by the um, uh, the, the NATO summit. Mm -hmm. which actually saw the expansion of NATO to five other, uh, other countries. And I think the, the message that was coming from Putin at the time was that the, um, uh, Ukraine and, and Georgia were no go zone. Exactly. Now, I'm not, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not making the case for, for one side or the other, but mm -hmm. I think that a, a thorough examination of empirical evidence is historical evidence on the factual basis. Uh, we can say that this is a cr uh, an unprovoked war that could have been largely uh, avoided uh, in, 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 with respect to not only the, the, the UN, the, the UN Charter, but also uh, a result to the natural uh, uh, toolbox mm -hmm. that we use in terms of addressing uh, uh, and preventing, averting uh, massive conflict. Uh, but now um, the Russians have the Russians have never admitted that it actu actually a war. They say just a military operation, mm -hmm. but uh, the damages are well uh, known today. Uh, mm -hmm. Why is it taking too long for this to be to to, to be resolved? Yeah, it's taking too long because mainly in my view, and I think if we want to uh, speak more clearly, it's, it's a proxy war and that the uh, sponsors on both sides are unwilling to come to the table because, uh, um, as you have noted, strangely, since the beginning of the war, there has not been a major attempt to broker peace. Yes. Uh, the, and, 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 and rather the contrary, that every attempt uh, to even initiate a dialogue mm -hmm. has been vilified and uh, sideline and marginalize mm -hmm. and, and so think I think uh, that firmly the Russians believe that their security interests are being significantly threatened on the other hand the uh, the, uh, the the Western uh, coalition on the the hegemon of the US believes that they are in the right to expand um, uh, the alliance uh, up to up, up to Ukraine so you have the um, uh, the, the, the the fact that it is impossible at the time mm -hmm. to reconcile those uh, extreme uh, positions, mm -hmm. uh, those opposing uh, those opposing views. But I think that we have um, insufficiently used the resources of preventive diplomacy, used the resources of inter uh, I mean international negotiations and peaceful settlements of conflict. Mm -hmm. I, I speak uh, from experience because I led negotiations that actually yielded. Uh, in international landmark uh, political agreement. Okay. So I think uh, uh, we need to take into account the underlying interests of both parties, looking at how on, um, on, 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 on a long-term basis the Russians can feel reassured that they will not be threatened in the near abroad, but at the same time uh, that the Western values of democratic expansion and promotion of, of, of freedom can also be upheld in those, in, 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 in those, in those territories. So you see we have come at a fork in the road. Um, um, the system is crashing before our eyes with far-reaching 
consequences uh, for us in Africa, has, as you have seen, uh, but also other part of the uh, of the world. You're seeing significant power outages in Europe yeah. now. You know, significant shortages in terms of fuel, mm -hmm. and 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 also the the, the value based system that actually has uh, supported the uh, state across the planet with the, with the family. It's it is being radically uh, changed uh, in the course of uh, of this conflict. But the conflict affects us. Mm -hmm. And that's what is of interest to me. Mm -hmm. Because as, uh, as you notice, the conflict took place against the backdrop of the EU-African summit in February 2022. And, 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 and that summit was to celebrate uh, the, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the New Deal between Europe and Africa. Mm -hmm. And that things were not going to be uh, uh, business as usual. But what happened in the early hours of the conflict is that African uh, or people from African descent mm -hmm. were targeted okay. systematically um, and rationally discriminated. That in the midst of a, ra a raging war, mm -hmm. people would think and, 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 and value their hatred for the black man, or the black individual, was rather um, uh, uh, strikingly strange. But at the same time, it informed us mm -hmm. that uh, taking part in this conflict is not always in, in our advantage. As you know, uh, when you look at the two world war, mm -hmm. Africa was heavily involved in terms of providing not only the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the manpower, but they say the manpower, but, but the, 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 the war effort, I mean, treasure, was invested, blood was invested, but that did not actually yield um, uh, significant trickle-down benefit mm -hmm. for us as African. And I think that informed by history uh, very wisely, mm -hmm. uh, the African political leadership across the board has decided to stand on the mm -hmm. sideline, and I think it's a position that I can understand. So you feel this other uh, conflict, uh, other crisis should be an eye-opener to the African community, especially when it comes to uh, uh, economic affairs, because mm -hmm. uh, we've seen uh, sanctions, economic sanctions that have been levied on, uh, on, uh, uh, on Russia, and uh, there have been uh, very little or almost uh, insignificant uh, mm -hmm. exportation, especially of wheat flour. Does that send Africans to the drawing board that they have to... No, uh, uh, shaken their 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 their, 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 their economic foundation, so to see how they can feed themselves by themselves and not always have to depend on uh, foreign countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's it, it's cumbersome open African to take up uh, the future in their own hand. Mm -hmm. Thirty million square kilometers, and um, I think it's unacceptable that we find ourselves in this time rather difficult being basically begging for food from two countries that are warring factions i mean that are warring countries yeah. it, it's um, absurd mm -hmm. it don't make sense it doesn't mm -hmm. and, and i think that uh, that is also an eye opener mm -hmm. that how in this very moment of fragmentation uh, of uh, disruptive coalescing crisis mm -hmm. uh, that are bound to change the architecture and the future of the planet. Mm -hmm. How do we sit at the table and articulate a vision to have a global influence and to be at long last people who are not always at the receiving end mm -hmm. of incomings but who are also able and capable of proposing how this future of our planet should be shaped, mm -hmm. taking into account their own interests first. Mm -hmm. Okay, now do you see any hope for the future? I understand you talked of uh, both parties not willing to come to the table, mm -hmm. but if this uh, crisis continues, mm -hmm. is this going to shape the world order? But it's already affecting in a very significant way um, uh, how uh, the emerging new world order is going to be uh, articulated. Uh, as you know, war is, uh, is the worst form of man in humanity mm -hmm. to man. And its destiny is final destiny. Yeah. It's peace. So I think that the, the voices of peace have been silenced for the moment. I think that the U.S. should come up 
with a major peace initiative okay. to which and bring people to the table mm -hmm. uh, because if support from the U.S. were to cease at the moment, I think that will have a significant impact on the dynamics uh, uh, of the conflict in, in, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, why peace matter? It matters, first of all, because um, um, an empirical analysis, mm -hmm. strategic analysis mm -hmm. of the forces involved lead me to the conclusion that even on the, the influence Mm -hmm. of hallucinatory optimism, mm -hmm. the Russians will prevail. Right now, um, they already have swallowed the Donbass. The Donbass is the size of Portugal exactly. in terms of the, the territory and so forth. And uh, it seems that the Ukrainian will never see the Donbass again. Mm -hmm. So it is time to stop the bloodshed, find a sound solutions that take into account the underlying interests of both parties and offer a durable solution that can allow the people of Ukraine and Russia to live in a, in a peaceful way mm -hmm. and then to create systems in which the majority of the people can flourish. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you made a, a succinct analysis of this crisis and how it affects the world. And one part that caught my attention was when you made mention of the threat of a nuclear, mm -hmm. you know, uh, nuclear uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. How well has the international or those concerned received this analysis from you? Yeah. No, I, I think that the, um, uh, all the talks about the use of nuclear weapons have been irrational, mm -hmm. irresponsible, reckless, uh, because the nature, the very nature of nuclear weapons mm -hmm. is not to be used, mm -hmm. but to serve as a significant deterrent mm -hmm. and to protect, you know, uh, vital national interests mm -hmm. uh, of country. But what has been what has been done in in the fa in the case of Ukraine is to exacerbate tensions about, you know, the use of nuclear weapons. It's it's basically uh, the sacralizing. Uh, uh, the very nature of those weapons were weapons of last res resort. As you know, no, there is never a winner mm -hmm. in a nuclear in a nuclear. But what is more worrisome is that a massive influx mm -hmm. of weaponry mm -hmm. have been injected into the war in Ukraine mm -hmm. in the midst of 50 nuclear reactors, mm -hmm. increasing and heightening the possibility of an accident mm -hmm. but especially act, with, uh, uh, you know so with you have 15 nuclear, nuclear not plant. only yes not only do you have 15 nuclear reactors i mean some of the most uh, um, significant nuclear plant in europe mm -hmm. are there like uh, so but in addition to that you have bacteriological labs mm -hmm. with the most uh, lethal uh, pathogens mm -hmm. and so forth so playing war in a zone, I mean, in an area like that, mm -hmm. which is mired with risk and danger, in my view, has been uh, significantly reckless because those who are the protagonists of those wars mm -hmm. um, are, are not responsible for the whole planet and blowing up the whole planet on the basis of their differences mm -hmm. is not a position that is just, it's unjustifiable, mm -hmm. it's immoral, and and that is why I believe that the voices of peace have to coalesce also now mm -hmm. and then put on the table a viable proposal and bring to that negotiating table mm -hmm. both parties. But otherwise, what this is going to lead not only a never-ending conflict in that region, but also the durable fragmentation of the planet as we see it. Uh, because I don't see the institutions uh, the regulatory framework mm -hmm. that was put in place in 1945 surviving in the long run if there is not a solution that is fine in this war. Okay. Um, now, besides because, being an international analyst, uh, you also came up with this concept of uh, the handy concept for connecting people, the HCCP. Mm -hmm. What's the concept? How well, the concept was basically uh, in this uh, time uh, which is fraught with perils okay. and security danger, which is seeing the radical transformation of our planet 
and to realize that if we are going to help catapult our country, um, our countries, respective countries, mm -hmm. ahead, then we needed to have laboratory influence, laboratory of ideas that can serve as a basis to nourish the formulation of public policy mm -hmm. and help enhance overall our position, uh, our global positioning uh, uh, on the planet. So it's the convening of um, uh, great minds uh, for a healthy exchange of intellectual um, capital uh, with a view to bridge the gap between those who elaborate and articulate mm -hmm. a sound vision on how uh, world affairs should be and also the policy makers mm -hmm. and uh, the political system uh, you know traditionally intellectuals have tended to be um, rather i mean there's been a chasm and uh, a gapping hole between uh, the the academy mm -hmm. and politicians in africa and we believe that those of us who have been fortunate enough to practice international diplomacy in international organization, but keeping a leg in the academy, mm -hmm. we can serve as a, as a bridge to have policies that are more bold, that are sound, and that are to the benefit of um, uh, the majority of, of our people. So what we are doing is really bringing those minds together, uh, um, diversifying our perspective in that sense, you know, uh, of course, um, we can no longer have the same relationship with Europe mm -hmm. that we used to have in the past. Mm -hmm. And for that to, to happen, we need to uh, put on the table our own proposals. Exactly. But we need to also, when you look at Colombia, Francia Marquez is from African descent. Five million African, I mean people from African descent are living in Colombia. And we should develop um, a Latin America strategy mm -hmm. with Colombia and Brazil at its center. We can look at Singapore, who's also uh, a shining example. We can look at all the other uh, major but diversifying, mm -hmm. multiplying opportunities for our, for for the future uh, of our country, and I think that that's the role that the ACCP Global is meaning, and that is what we're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe with with maximum effectiveness, we're doing it already now, but also um, reviewing our relationship with America, having put in place a six-lane highways of knowledge sharing uh, on a variety uh, of domain, trying to balance the soft power mm -hmm. with the need of our youth, um, looking at what we can do uh, with, with Canada. Just make it simple that we are going to be seeking opportunities wherever they are and, and putting that to the benefit of the um, empowerment of our people. Yes, that is in a nutshell, making Africa comfortable for Africans. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Simon Pascal and Andy, for your time. We very much appreciate those insights you've given to the, the pleasure was mine. The crisis the in Asia. The pleasure was all mine, and I was happy to be here and, and, and have that impromptu chat with you about major challenges facing us and how we can come up all with right. common sense solutions. Thank you very much. Assets are always ready to receive minds like you and. Uh, I hope we have the green card to invite you whenever we... Uh, 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 je, suis, je serai très heureux de revenir, uh, parler avec vous uh, à n'importe quel moment uh, sur les principales questions qui fouettent l'intelligence africaine en ce moment et la manière que nous nous proposons en tant que laboratoire d'idées de, de, de nourrir uh, les politiques publiques, la formulation des politiques publiques, mais aussi notre position dans le monde. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take this brief, brief break. When we come back, we shall be looking at uh, the role of cooperatives, especially in uh, boosting food security. <laughs> You are still watching CR TV News and the program on air is Twilight. After the first panel, let's now talk cooperatives. How important are they and how do you go about setting up a cooperative? This is in light with a training session coming up next month between November 11 and 12 uh, that will see some 
persons, interested persons, upgrade their skills, especially when it comes to going through the procedure of setting up a cooperative. Now we let's receive on set Jean Pierre Niemek, who yeah. is uh, attorney with uh, the African Intellectual Property uh, Organization. Yes. And uh, beside that, you are also a management expert. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Dixon. How are you doing? Very fine, very fine. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, uh, cooperatives have always been regarded as uh, those bodies that, uh, you know, foster growth, especially in the agricultural domain. But now yes. I want us to leave that set, that, uh, that uh, setting and look at where exactly should these cooperatives exist? Okay, thank you for, for the questions. Uh, there is some some things I want to, 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 to add. First, cooperatives uh, are companies. Mm -hmm. So they are hybrid companies. They are both like associations and they are both like WADA companies, okay. like limited companies. So you can set up a cooperative in all the business fields. Okay. There is no limitations. All right. But agriculture, because there is several uh, chains of actions in agriculture. That's exactly. why uh, cooperatives are more sustainable, more suitable mm -hmm. for, for the, the agriculture fields. All right. But you can set up your, your cooperative in all of the fields. There is no limitation legally. Now, is, are they indispensable? I think in our context, mm -hmm. they are indispensable. And uh, I will explain why. When you want to set up a, a company, mm -hmm. you face some hurdles, you face some challenges. Okay. Most entrepreneurs don't have the funds because when you go, uh, if you want to have a limited company, for example, you have to pay some fees, some administrative fees that okay. can be very uh, expensive, expensive for, for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And you have to pay for workmanship. You have to, to pay for, mm. for the, the job for your collaborators. Okay. So if you don't have the funding, if you don't have the expertise, it will be very difficult to launch your business if you are alone. That's why cooperatives, which are rooted mm. under some principles like democracy, like mutual help, like solidarity, are one of the most sustainable companies in our context All because right. it enables people to be together, mm -hmm. to to. To, to bring their expertise together, to bring their fund together like, mm -hmm. uh, like Donty, mm -hmm. and they can launch uh, their, their business, they can help to grow their, their activities, supporting each, grow, other. supporting each other. Okay. So it's easier in our context because we are Africans, mm -hmm. we know how to, to operate mm -hmm. uh, together. So if and entrepreneurs, especially those who are in the vulnerable communities, mm -hmm. like women, like uh, the the young, the, the youth, the youth, can have the funds mm -hmm. to launch their companies Purchase. because it's too expensive. They can go and settle a cooperative mm -hmm. together and put all their expertises, all their resources together, and help to foster their the activity. their activities. Uh, together now what does it take to set up a cooperative now you are uh, you you made mention of the Ohada law what why is it specific with the Ohada law okay so Ohada law uh, first of all the the first precision I want to 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 to, to bring to the table is that Ohada uh, cooperative are companies mm -hmm. so that's why they are under the Ohada law. law so there are some rules that are are uh, determined that are f settled by the the order law but there is uh, a particularities in our context mm -hmm. because there is a ministry there is a minister a mm -hmm. ministry, ministry a ministry that is uh, under who puts other rules okay uh, of a cooperative mm -hmm. like the agriculture ministries mm -hmm. so if you want to settle your cooperative you have to follow the rules of mm -hmm. the OWADA law mm -hmm. the, the cooperative act mm -hmm. and you have to follow mm -hmm. the procedure that is settled that is established by the agricultural cooperative mm -hmm. and you need to have some legal papers mm -hmm. for example the statutes the internal rules mm -hmm. the, the 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 use mm -hmm. the use usage of, of service 
etc so that's some of the things i can say okay when people want to to set up a cooperative because uh, usually we have cooperatives that are just functioning without any legal backing and uh, what uh, advantages do you do you do cooperatives that follow this right procedure benefit what what's their benefit apart from just being covered by the law do they have uh, special access to maybe uh, financial aid yes the, the first thing to say like, like I said uh, when you are an entrepreneur you you need to be to 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 register your companies okay because it brings you some benefits exactly those are you, the benefits I'm looking into now yes you you talk about f access to fundings mm -hmm. uh, you can go to a to a to an international companies mm -hmm. on international organization which had some funding programs mm -hmm. or training uh, training sessions mm -hmm. that people who are mm -hmm. registered as cooperative mm -hmm. can benefit that's right. why on the, the the benefits and if you want to export your goods for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. you, you you talk about uh, agriculture mm -hmm. you know that uh, today we are talking about uh, exportations more and more mm -hmm. the development of uh, our the made in cameroon mm -hmm. so it's very important to have a, a, a legal uh, background a legal coverage mm -hmm. to 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 ease the process the of process. exportation mm -hmm. if you are are uh, not registered it will be complicated because you can face some some hurdles of difficulties for example uh, if you have a trademark mm -hmm. you can your, your trademark can be stolen mm -hmm. you can face counterfeit mm -hmm. and you will not have any uh, any means of mm -hmm. defending yourselves because you are not uh, legally uh, registered a company. Now, and that will also uh, not permit you grow in business. You remain stagnant. Now, uh, there's this training coming up uh, between uh, November 11 and 12 that you'll be organizing and um, you will be giving out these notes to those who are interested, especially those with cooperatives. Now, what yes. other aspect of, uh, of uh, this training will yes. interest those who want to be part of it? Okay, so the, there are there will be many advantages mm -hmm. to to attend the seminar. the The first advantage will be to 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 have the tools, the legal and the management, mm -hmm. the managing tools, mm -hmm. to make a cooperative uh, efficient All right. economic economically. So when people attend, mm -hmm. they will have those those, those tools. Okay. And because our, the, the seminar is 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 under the the, the, the partnership of mm -hmm. some ministries like the Ministry of, of Women's Empowerment, and family. the Ministry and a Family, the Ministry of Small Size, Small and Medium Size Enterprises, mm -hmm. we will sign the the certificates. Mm -hmm. It can be an advantage if someone wants to train want mm -hmm. to be a, a professional trainers and bring its expertises what you will learn mm -hmm. into in uh, in attending our seminar if you want to okay. to where when to where where will it take place by the way it will take place at the cpf centre de promotion de la femme okay uh, uh, next to rondpoint express Thank you very much. Thank you. Jean-Pierre Niemek, it's been a real pleasure exchanging with you on the those, that aspect of uh, corporate, cooperative establishment, especially under the OHADA law. Okay, thank you. The, the pleasure was shared. Let's uh, take a brief break. When we come back, Carmen right. Olivia Billet is already on set to give us the news in the French language. region the were apprehended a few days ago after a complaint came up by those uh, dealing with vehicles in that city let's now listen to Le lieutenant colonel vogo abanda alors il s'agit de la récupération d'un certain nombre, en fait, disons, une importante saisie, n'est-ce pas, de véhicules volés. Et donc, euh, on a mis la main progressivement sur un gang, un gang de, 
qui font dans le, le vol de véhicules. Bon, tout est parti euh, de, en fait, euh, à partir de la plainte, la plainte d'un collectif, un collectif de vendeurs de véhicules du côté de Douala, alors qu'ils nous ont donc saisi de ce que plusieurs véhicules avaient été emportés par les malfrats et dans plusieurs zones du pays, ici dans la région du centre, au sud et même du côté de l'ouest. Donc, euh, c'était au mois de juillet. Nous avons, euh, grâce à, à nos informateurs, on, a, euh, on avait pu mettre la main sur certains des malfrats, euh, ici à Yaoundé notamment, du côté de la carrière. Euh, la procédure avait été menée et puis euh, ils avaient été déférés dans les différents parquets. Les, ceux qui étaient en fuite euh, parmi eux, il y a un certain Kanoudi euh, qui avait été interpellé euh, par la Légion de gendarmerie de l'extrême nord euh, tout récemment. Euh, il y a un autre qui est en fuite du côté du Gabon. Et c'est comme ça donc que grâce à nos informateurs, nous avons pu euh, localiser euh, l'un des véhicules du côté de l'ouest dans la ville de Tchang. Nous avons euh, saisi le dit véhicule. Euh, L'exploitation, n'est-ce pas, des occupants nous a permis de mettre la main sur euh, un certain Ewané du côté de Douala, qui savait être euh, parmi les cerveaux hein, de ce gang. Nous avons également lancé des recherches vis-à-vis, euh, euh, n'est-ce pas, de la personne euh, vers qui le véhicule avait été euh, orienté, qui savait être sa sœur, une certaine euh, euh, Madame Keng. Aoum Rachel, qui jusqu'à ce jour ne s'est pas présenté. Et nous avons donc lancé des recherches euh, euh, sur sa personne. Donc, euh, grosso modo, euh, comme je l'ai dit, il s'agit d'un démantèlement d'un réseau hein, de, de vols de véhicules. Les véhicules que vous voyez derrière vous, euh, c'est les, les derniers de la liste. Euh, nous avons déjà récupéré pratiquement six véhicules. Six véhicules. Dont les, il y a des victimes euh, qui ont été... Euh, euh, saisi et euh, euh, avec l'intervention du parquet hein, euh, ont pu euh, rentrer en possession de leurs biens. Ils sont très malins. Ils commencent d'abord par désactiver, par, fait, par désactiver le GPS. Ensuite, ils utilisent euh, euh, des faux papiers, c'est-à-dire des faux papiers de dédouanement. Comme vous voyez le véhicule euh, de Marc RAF4 de couleur noire qui est derrière nous. Les dossiers, si vous allez à la délégation des transports du travail, vous verrez que les dossiers sont euh, déposés pour l'obtention d'une carte grise qui malheureusement pourrait euh, ou alors si euh, ça, euh, ça avait été fait hein, on aurait eu une carte grise frauduleusement euh, obtenue donc voilà à peu près comment les intéressés procèdent et c'est des gens qui connaissent très bien les véhicules parce qu'eux-mêmes ils font dans la vente des véhicules c'est des spécialistes donc ils savent à peu près qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire et comment est-ce qu'il faut procéder déjà bon nous avons, on a eu le problème déjà avec notre chauffeur le chauffeur qui est euh, parti avec le véhicule quand il va avec le véhicule, on, se, on lance les recherches, on se rend compte parmi les, les véhicules, c'est un des plaignants, une personne qui lui avait aussi confié à notre véhicule, qui se rend compte que, le véhicule a, que les véhicules ont disparu. Il nous, il, nous met dans, il nous appelle donc, il nous met en alerte, il nous demande de, de descendre. Mais grâce à Dieu déjà, les gars n'avaient pas retiré le GPS dans la voiture, euh, qui est la 26 qui est derrière vous bleu. Déjà, ce n'est pas sa couleur d'origine. Les gars avaient déjà, ils avaient déjà changé les couleurs de véhicule. Bon, quand, on descend sur, quand on descend sur Yaoundé, on se rend compte que ça a pris. Maintenant, on lance l'enquête, on lance la plainte à la première région de gendarmerie. C'est là où on se replie vers eux. Grâce à Dieu, aujourd'hui, bon, avec leur travail, vraiment, beaucoup de travail, parce que ça a pris, c'est une enquête qui a allé sur pratiquement cinq mois. Ils n'ont jamais lâché. Et aujourd'hui, nous sommes rentrés en possession de nos véhicules. Mais comme le colonel l'a dit, il y a des personnes qui sont encore, à, à, qui sont encore recherchées, parmi lesquelles la madame Woum, il y a aussi... Euh, euh, un certain euh, euh, Kaloudi. Kaloudi, on lui en connaît là où il se trouve déjà. Il est à, à l'extrême nord. Comme il a dit, il est à la prison de l'extrême nord parce qu'il a été pris toujours dans une affaire de, de vol de voiture similaire. Bon, ce que je peux dire de manière, euh, de manière brève, c'est pour dire merci encore à la Première Légion et nous sommes entrés en position de nos véhicules, mais je pense que la procédure va continuer. And that puts an end to this other edition of uh, Twilight on CRTV News. Thanks very much for watching. Do stay on CRTV and CRTV News. Up next is the news in the English language by 7.30. Have a blessed evening.